Hey guys, we're here for Kids Art and um, we're going to be working with bleeding tissue paper today and I'm all by myself. The kids are at Grandma Sid's this morning so hopefully maybe following along over there. So I'm just going to go over a couple of things that you'll need to start. Um, I would cover your space with some type of tablecloth, some type of plastic tablecloth to um, protect the space. You're going to probably want some paper towels because this does stain. So um, your fingers will be stained after this, but after several washings, it should come out. So um, grab a roll of paper towels, and then um, you will need some bleeding tissue paper. So this is different than what you normally use for tissue paper in like, um, you know, when you're doing gift bags or whatever. So you can find this on, I found this on Amazon. I think you can find it at some uh, like craft type stores as well. So um, for those of you that have the to-go bag at home, you should have at least six different colors in your um, in your bag. The thing with this tissue paper here is you want to make sure that it doesn't get wet before you decide that you want it to be wet because that's what releases the dye in it. And you will also need a spray bottle with water in it. Um, we're gonna also try out using an oil pastel. This will be for after one of the uh, projects is dry. You will need a Sharpie and a scissors. And then also for this one particular one, so we're gonna try out doing something like this. Um, this is where the tissue paper is actually adhered to the paper. So you will want, I use, this is like a spray adhesive. Um, I know that like Elmer's glue sells a spray adhesive as well, so you could um, try that out. And I'm just wondering if you did like a glue stick on the paper, or else maybe try, I haven't tried this, so you know, just it's, some of this is trial and error. So this is kind of an experimentation with this bleeding tissue paper here. And so I gave um, each of you that went home with the to-go bags have three sheets of mixed media paper. You could also use watercolor paper. And so I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and fold those sheets in half and then cut them. So um, like this sheet of paper was this size and I cut it in half so that I have like one to sort of experiment with and then maybe one that I have like my final art piece on or just a whole bunch of experimentation. So we're gonna start out um, I'm gonna show you three different techniques for using the bleeding tissue paper today. So this one is where we're gonna actually adhere the uh, tissue paper to the either mixed media or watercolor paper. And so what you're gonna to wanna to do is just kind of think of an idea in your mind of what you wanna create. So I did a, a potted flower. You can do anything your heart desires. The idea here is to keep the shapes simple. And so like, I feel like uh, cutting out petals on tissue paper is fairly simple. Um, you could also do um, another project that, or another technique that we're doing. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you using stars, but you could also do like hearts or just circles or um, trying to think what else, maybe sort of like um, you guys have the, I think you have almost all the colors of the rainbow. For whatever reason, this pack was short on yellow, so maybe one or two of you didn't end up with yellow, but there is an orange in there at least. So you could also maybe do just sort of rainbow, a rainbow shape. Um, that could work. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start cutting out just general shapes of petals. So it doesn't have to be perfect. The, um, the paper is going to, the color on the tissue paper is going to bleed. So we're gonna let this one dry after we do it. And then for the background, I just tore sheets of orange and yellow. So I'll show you that here in a minute. I'm just gonna cut out about five or six uh, petal shapes. So I'll show, hold these up here, something kinda like this. Um, and again, these are not all the same. They're obviously just kinda rough 
shapes and you can save all of so like you see all this i have kind of like this extra here this can be you can reuse this so um so it's sort of the ugly parts that are left over after you cut your shapes out you can use that because um there might be places where you want to just fill in as we're adding this to our uh, watercolor paper so i'm just going to use some of this here all right so that's about five and so I have my extra there. I'm gonna cut out some leaf shapes. So I'll hold this just a little bit closer so you can get a better idea. So these are my petals and then just some rough leaf shapes. We're gonna go over and draw this um, over top of this one. This one is dry. So if you don't have spray adhesive, again, maybe you wanna try out the glue stick. And I'll show you where to put that down once we get to that part. But again, I'm probably going to cut out about, I'm making these leaves a little bit fatter than my petal shapes, but you could do the same shape if you want. save all my extras over here in case there's some place that I want to use this as we work through this project today. All right, I got about five of those and then I'm gonna do the bottom, my um, pot for the plant. And so I'm just gonna cut out kind of a rough square shape. Something about like that. So I'm going to start with my sheet of paper and it's kind of nice to place down uh, some paper towels here because we are going to spray this sheet of paper with water and this over. And so this is going to, your paper might kind of bow up like this so it's kind of like in a, a curved shape and this is going to catch that excess dye that's going to run off the edges. So I'm first gonna start with putting my spray adhesive down. So if you have um, like a Elmer's glue, you could maybe kind of smear that around on here lightly. Um, or if you have the stick glue, you could try putting that around on here too. I don't know if that's gonna work, but in my mind, I feel like it should. So if you have the spray adhesive, you might need to use more of this later too. I'm just gonna spray my sheet here. Kind of get an even coat all over the whole thing. And then I'm going to spray my sheet of paper with water. So um, you want to sort of protect your tissue paper from getting wet here because that will start to release the dye in the tissue paper. And I'm also gonna have my yellow and orange here. This is gonna be my background. And so I'm just gonna have this setting off to the side. I'm gonna start by placing the flower pot down. So I'm gonna place this down kind of here at the bottom. I wanna just sort of even off the end of that. Okay, so I'm gonna place that down here on the bottom. And once you put that down, you're gonna notice you're gonna to start to get color on your fingers, and that's okay. All right, so then I have my leaves. So I'm gonna just kind of place these down here. I'm gonna hold this up here so you can get a better idea of what I'm doing. And then I'll put the petals on last. All right, so I have this sticking to my sheet of paper. So the, the water and the spray adhesive are kind of holding this down. In the long term, when the water dries, that will not hold the tissue paper to your piece of paper. 
So that's why we want to put the spray adhesive down. And then I'm just going to sort of make a flower-ish type shape. And you might find that you might want more petals. And I got a little bit of extra space here, so I'm just going to hold this up. So I did this. And I got this little space right here where that white is. So I'm going to place a, just a, and one of those extra little pieces that I had. I'm just going to place that down over top of this so that it fills that hole in. All right, so I'm going to place that down. And then I'm going to spray over top of this. So this is going to start to release even more of the color. And it might start to get messy. And if you don't have the spray adhesive down, um, it might blow the tissue paper right off. So I had one of those little pieces kind of come up there. And then I'm gonna hold this up here again so you can see that the color is starting to bleed into other places and run off the paper. So again, this will stain your hands. So I have that. Now I'm gonna do the background and I'm just gonna do some yellow and orange for my background. So. I, any place that it looks like there is not water or if too much water ran off, you can just spray a little bit more. So that's, you need water underneath and on top of the tissue paper to sort of activate it. So I'm just gonna start to fill in all of the extra white space with my orange and yellow. And there's no real right or wrong way to do this. You can layer the yellow over top of the white or sorry, yellow over top of the orange. And I'm just gonna fill in all of the spaces. And I'm probably gonna have some hanging off the edge here, but I'm gonna come back after this is all dry and just sort of snip that out of there. And if you decide you don't want to fill in all of the white space, you don't have to do that. So we are going to go over top of this with oil pastel. And we're going to need this whole thing to dry before we do that. So if you have a place that you can sort of lay this, maybe in front of a heater, while we work on the next couple of projects, that might be helpful so that you can finish that up. Or of course you can always go back and finish it whenever it works for you. Let's see, I'm gonna need some orange over here. spray over top of this again too. So some of the places have dried a little bit so I'm just going to spray up here in this top corner in order to get some of this other to kind of stick down. And maybe just a tiny bit more orange. So it's gonna look pretty messy to start out with. And the oil pastel that we go over top of it with is gonna to start, to start to define the shape. All right, so I'll just hold this up and then I'm gonna spray over top of it again. So it looks like this. And then as you spray it, you can kind of see the pink bleeds into the 
yellow and the orange and all of it kind of mixes together. So that is that and I'm just gonna go ahead and set this off here to the side. I'm gonna set it on a little bit of paper towel so that it's gonna, so notice how that starts to bow kind of like this and then all of your dye is gonna run here to the edges so the paper towel will help to catch some of that. All right, so the next one that we do, um, we're gonna use a Sharpie and we're gonna use the tissue paper. So again, the idea is to draw, draw whatever you want here. We're gonna use the Sharpie because that's gonna, um, it's not gonna bleed once you spray water over top of it. So you can draw uh, like a night scene with moon and stars and maybe ground and or maybe nature with trees and sunshine or just a bunch of shapes um, underwater could be kind of cool especially if you have a lot of blues and greens um, so we're going to use the tissue paper and it creates sort of this watercolor effect in the background so i did a um, simple flower shape so it's similar to what i had drawn on there and so what you're going to do is you're going to draw on your sheet of paper, give it, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds just to make sure the Sharpie is nice and dry. And then over top of it, you are going to lay tissue paper. So my idea for this was to place kind of a pink color over top of the flower portion. And then I did green kind of from here down to color in the leaves and then the, the ground as if it were grass. And then this top up here was like an orange yellow kind of similar to what we just did with the potted flower. Again, this can be anything. Draw whatever you want and then you can add whatever colors that you have in your pack that you went home with on top of it. So what you want to do again to activate it, you need to, the water to be both underneath and on top of the tissue paper. So I'm gonna maybe start with just sort of getting an idea of about how big my flower shape is and then I'm gonna not actually cut out the flower shape, I'm just gonna cut like a square. If you wanna cut out the flower shape, you can totally go for that. So here's that, something like that. And then I'm gonna do green, maybe I'll do a little green and yellow on the bottom. So just cutting out sort of Random shapes. You could tear this too. Don't need to cut it. And I do want to save just enough of that yellow for... I'm just gonna do a little bit of yellow on the bottom and then the rest green. And then I'll do um, some yellow and oranges up here on top. So I'm just kind of tearing this owl out ahead of time so that I get kind of an idea of how much I need to cover this whole sheet of paper. All right, that's probably about good. And if you have some of those extra scraps over there that you cut from your other one, then you can go ahead and use those to fill in the extra white spaces too. Yeah, let's do some. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of set all this off to the side here. So I have my plain white sheet of paper here with my drawing on it again. And I'm going to scoop my tissue paper out of the way so that it does not get wet. And then I'm going to take my spray bottle and I'm going to spray my drawing. Looks pretty good. So you don't need to put any adhesive down for this one. Just the water, and then I'm gonna place my, let's see if I can see that. Okay, so I'm gonna place my color over top of my flower. I'm gonna start to add some of the green down here on the bottom. And you want a decent layer of water underneath here. All right, and then I put some green over here. All right. 
right, and then I got some green over here. I'm going to go ahead and spray on top of this again. And then I'm going to continue to add in where there's any white space. To just let this kind of sit there for a, a little minute just to let the color kind of soak into the paper. I have quite a lot of water on my paper here so it's really certain to kind of bow a lot. Alright, so for those last couple of sheets that I put down, I'm just going to add a little bit more water. And so the water is starting to sort of soak into the paper. And then I'm going to start to lift the tissue paper off. And what I should have done <laughs> is had this. So if you can see, there's a whole bunch of ink on my tablecloth here. If I put this down on here, I'm gonna take the tissue sheets off. I'm just gonna kind of pull them off, maybe one at a time. If there's some white spaces, you can kind of drag the tissue paper over top of it to invite the ink into the white space. And so this, creates sort of a watercolor effect. And then I'm just gonna kinda drag that tissue paper around there cause it had some white space and maybe you like the white space so that's okay if you wanna leave that on there too. Let's see what my flower looks like under here. So if you'll see there's like a little bit of white space there so I'm just gonna drag the tissue paper around on there. All right, and then we can pull. So when you pull it off and it's white, like right here, it probably just means you didn't have very much water right there on that particular space when you laid the tissue paper on top of it. And like I said, this gets messy. All right, we can peel all that off. And so same thing down there at the bottom. There's a bunch of white, so I'm just going to drag my tissue paper across it. Oops, I put a little bit up here on top. That's all right. Okay, so again, this is another piece that we'll need to dry. Um, if you're using your watercolor or mixed media paper, that should, um, it should dry fairly flat. All right, so there's that one. And I'm going to set this one that we just did in front of the heater, so hopefully it's dry by the time we're finished with the next one. So just continue on with what you're doing on that one. And then for the last one, we are going to, you can just keep your paper towel right here. Um, you're gonna take your last sheet and I'm gonna cut out a couple of shapes where this is going to be kind of an abstract idea. Now, if you wanted to, you could go over top with the oil pastel and sort of draw in over top to kind of concrete the shape that you made on here. Again, I'm gonna invite you to use a very simple shape. Um, I chose stars, and I'm gonna draw them out on my yellow paper. Uh, you could, again, hearts, circles, squares. Um, can be a 
totally organic shape with you know not no specific name to the shape like if you wanted to just place this down you could do that too and so we're going to start by putting down one shape and then we're going to sort of build the background around it so like i said i'm going to use star so i'm going to take this yellow um i think there's maybe only one pack that didn't get a yellow so anyway if you're doing star and you didn't get yellow in there just use like orange that could work just as well and you want to do a star you could again choose whatever shape you want so i took my tissue paper and then i used a pencil to just roughly draw in a star shape and if you want to get an idea for size you could just lay your dry tissue paper over top a dry sheet of paper and then just sort of draw out how big you want your shape to be so I'm gonna do something like that, and then I'm gonna put one down here. So I'm gonna cut out two star shapes. Now, when you cut them out, they don't have to be perfect. So I'll hold that up close. Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't sort of see it. Okay. So I'm just gonna come in here. Actually cut out a little bigger than what I did my star shape as, but So the, one of the reasons you don't need to cut perfectly along your lines here is because when you add the water, the shape will bleed anyway. So this will be another example of where you do not need to use the adhesive because we're gonna do it just like the last one we just did. We're gonna put the shape down and then we're going to peel it off and just create that watercolor effect. So this one will be a little bit more abstract than the Sharpie flower that we just did or whatever you chose to draw. And so just a reminder that um, if you are in the Ellendale area and you would like to do this project and you don't have bleeding tissue paper, or maybe you need an oil pastel or a Sharpie, um, or the paper, the watercolor paper, I think, I, or mixed media paper is actually probably what I set home. Um, just let me know, comment or text or message me and I'll get that bag put together and then you can come pick it up whenever. So we have we do have extra supplies and it is free from the Ellendale Area Arts Council. Okay, so we did this and then my background color is going to be this dark purple. So just an FYI, these dark colors, um, they really stick with your fingers. So if you don't wanna have purple fingers for the next day or two, maybe choose a lighter color. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna, I'm gonna put my paper on top of this paper towel and you're gonna take your water bottle and again, with your tissue paper kind of cleared of the space, I'm gonna go ahead and spray. So just a reminder that any of those spaces that didn't get water is where white will be left behind again, but you don't wanna to put too much water on, so it's kind of like this perfect balance. So I'm gonna take my star, and I'm just gonna lay it down wherever. And same thing with the other one, and I'll kind of hold this up here so you can see. All right, so I got my stars on there. And then I'm gonna to start to fill in the background with purple. Now, if you wanted to do a couple of different colors in the background, you could do that too. Maybe a purple and a blue, especially if you were doing stars would be really cool. So I'm just gonna lay these down. Sort of get kind of close to my star edges here. And as you peel this off, you can do the same type of thing that we did with just the last one. You can uh, sort of drag the tissue paper to fill in any spaces that didn't get color. Oops, 
gonna spray this again because I wanna make sure my purple is going to get filled in. just takes a little bit of time and you're gonna find that your purple is gonna bleed into your star so this is sort of like a project of like letting go of control so if you're a person that really likes things to be perfect and neat this could be a challenging project it's kind of like working with alcohol inks they kind of just do they do what they want to do to add water as you go. For example, this almost doesn't even want to stick to the paper, so I would say that that's probably too dry. You need to add some water. And then I'll hold this up again before I peel all of the tissue paper off. Two more pieces. I didn't fill in every tiny little white space here. All right, but here's what we got. And you can already see on that bottom one how the purple is bleeding into the yellow. All right, so I might just spray a couple pieces here that are kind of sticking up. So when, it, it, I don't know, to me it seems like those didn't get quite as much water as maybe they should. And then same thing we did with the other one, we're just gonna start to peel our tissue paper off. And if you wanna drag it off, that might help to fill in some of the white space if you have any. So the other thing about when you lift this and move it, when it has a lot of water still on it, um, that could change your image as well, which, you know, can be good or bad. So sometimes it's good to just let it sit there and kind of dry and do its thing. So I'm peeling off all the purple first. And then I'm gonna come back and peel off my yellow. So it creates sort of this watercolor effect. So you could probably do this with watercolor too, but this is just kind of a fun way to experiment with different mediums. Um, I personally found that using gloves with this was sort of frustrating, but if you wanna protect your hands from getting all these stains on them, you could have, of course use some kind of disposable gloves. All right, so I got all my purple off. And then I'm gonna peel the yellow off as well. All right, and a little bit more yellow in my star. All right, so you can kind of see what's going on there. And that's the final one that we'll do. I'm gonna go back and grab the other one and see if that's dry enough to use the oil pastel on top. And if not, I'll just go over top of that other one and show you how we did that. All right, so there's a couple of spots that are 
It's pretty much dry though. You can use your scissors to trim off all of this excess edges here that we have over the sides. I'm gonna scoot this wet paper towel out of the way. Kind of clear off my space so I have a dry space to work with. And then I'm gonna have my, my pot and my leaves and my plant on top. And then what I'm gonna do with this oil pastel and we chose the black one just because it would you would be able to see it over top of dark um, colors too, like this purple. So I'm going to draw in the shape of the petals. I'm going to draw in the shape of the leaves and just add like the veining on the leaves. And then just do a little decoration on the pot down here. So you want to look to see where your leaf shape is. This is still a little wet over top of the leaves. And then I'm just going to draw those in. So I'm going to do two of them here and then I'm going to hold it up to show you what I mean. All right, so I'm just drawing in the shape of the leaves like this. So that one leaf didn't have a whole lot of pink on it. I got a lot of yellow on it though. All right, so here's the shape of my flower. I'm gonna draw three little circles in the metal in the middle, just to sort of be like the center of the flower. And then I'm gonna go over top and I'm gonna make the shape of the leaves. So if you didn't have adhesive, then your tissue paper probably isn't sticking down. All right, so then my leaves are gonna be a simple shape like that. So I'll go ahead and do the rest of those. Now, if you have the spray adhesive and you find that, like for example, this one leaf isn't really sticking down here, um, I can go and just spray underneath of it and then stick it back down. And it's kind of hard to see where that other leaf shape was, something like that. All right, so then I have my leaves drawn in. And then I'm gonna just sort of emphasize the shape of the flower pot. So I'm just gonna draw a square around the outside of it. And then I just did little squiggly lines, like so. And so that is the last one. So hope you guys enjoyed that today. Again, just um, comment, message, or text me. If you'd like these supplies, I'd be happy to put them together for you today to pick up. And we'll have kids art again next Saturday. And I'm forgetting what we're doing next Saturday again. So you'll just have to check back. If you go to the J. Everly Co. page, there is an event tab. If you click on that, um, there is a kids art event in there. And then I have them all listed out through like June, I think. So um, you can see on there by date what we're doing each week. So go ahead and check that out. Again, supplies are free and um, through the Ellendale Area Arts Council. So the more that join in, the merrier. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, that should be it. I, we have three events in February. I know one of them is quilling, which is like rolling paper. I can't remember which weekend we're doing that, but anyway, there are three weekends in February that we'll be doing kids art, so go to the J. Everly Co. page and check that out. This video will be on my page. I'll also post it to the J. Everly Co. page and the Ellendale Area Arts Council page. Thanks for joining in, guys. Bye.